after mischievously ordering food online, Garfield tells the audience about the first time he met John Arbuckle and how he became his owner. One stormy night, a young Garfield was abandoned in a box in an alley. His father told him to wait, but never came back. The rumbling thunder scared Garfield when the scent from an Italian restaurant across the street caught his attention. Once the rain cleared up, he crossed the busy street, barely dodging being run over. John was attending a relative's bar mitzvah when he felt lonely after seeing families enjoying their dinner while he was by himself. When he's about to eat his pizza, a stray kitten shows up on his window who appears to be hungry. Pitying it, John lets it inside, who shockingly ate the whole pizza by itself. He tried hiding Garfield when the waiter showed up, worried he'd kick him out of the restaurant. He only took his eyes off him for a second when Garfield suddenly disappeared. He finds him jumping from table to table and eating their food. He eventually catches him and leaves the restaurant before they are caught. Worried that his apartment doesn't allow pets, John bids goodbye and parts with him. Remorseful, he takes Garfield when he slowly drifts away in his own tears and decides to take him in when Garfield gets close to him. With that said, John and Garfield moved to a house downtown and took in another pet, Odie the dog, to whom Garfield dragged in his usual antics. One time, John fell asleep on the chair, tired from work. Garfield shockingly helped get him to bed, worried he might get sick if he left him as it is. He tells Odie not to tell anyone for being uncharacteristically caring for John. Later that night, he is awoken by sounds in the kitchen and asks Odie to accompany him downstairs. They were working on making a midnight snack when they suddenly heard noises from the pet door and found the kitchen windows wide open. Out of nowhere, a large Sharpe and a small Whippet catch them both in a sack. Still unsure of what is happening, the Sharpe and Whippet tie them to a rope and hang them upside down to be bait. Later, a mysteriously cloaked individual shows up and rescues them. He swings them to a balcony and then cuts off the rope they are tied to. As soon as they were free, he urged them both to escape, to which Garfield recognized his voice. He pulls the cloak to reveal him to be Vic, his father, who abandoned him in an alley when he was still a kitten. While arguing, Jinx, a villainous Persian cat, sneaks up behind them and surprises Vic. Vic grows anxious that Jinx will be more vengeful towards him, but she keeps up with appearances and calmly talks with them. Jinx tells Garfield how she once aimed to become famous, but when she finally got on stage, she choked and couldn't perform. Still unable to believe what had happened, Jinx was sitting alone when Vic and his old gang took her in. Everything went great until the day they decided to hit Lactose Farms. Just when they thought they had escaped safely, Jinx got caught when she returned for a bottle she dropped. She called Vic, but he could only watch as they took her away. She later resigned to her fate in prison when she suddenly met Roland and Nolan, who became her henchmen, and together they escaped. Garfield stopped beating around the bush and asked Jinx what she wanted from them. She explains that she is willing to let them go if they could get her a quarter of milk for every day that she was in prison, which she reveals to be four years, seven months, and two days. Worried that he couldn't get her 1,675 bottles, Vic complains to Jinx, who insists he should hit lactose farms. Garfield walks away, claiming not to involve himself, but Jinx insists that he help Vic or stay behind to play with Roland and Nolan. Forced to help Vic, Garfield blames his father for abandoning him and getting him involved with a crime. With Lactose Farms still a way off, Vic suggests riding an incoming train, to which Garfield agrees. Vic quickly puts him on a branch and catapults him onto a moving train. Vic and Odie then get on the train safely while Garfield keeps bouncing back and forth before eventually landing on the train. When they finally arrive, they discover Lactose Farms has been turned into an amusement park. When they thought they'd just walk right in, they later found that the gates had electrified fences. 
Trying to figure out a way inside, Garfield suddenly finds Otto, the oversized bull, on a cliff, sulking. Recognizing him as the mascot of Lactose Farms, Garfield suspects that Otto must know a way in and tries to convince him to help them. Otto briefly sees a lady cow from afar before her new owners carted her away. He walks away and starts brooding again, to whom Odie comforts. Otto explains how old man Lactose was forced out of business. The new company that took over turned it into an amusement park where he was put out to pasture, while Ethel was made part of the tour. Garfield later convinces Otto to help them in exchange for breaking Ethel out. Once he agreed to help them, Otto quickly got over their plan to break in. Garfield complained when Otto made a road-killed possum as his symbol, who, unlike Vic, was represented by a majestic bullfrog, while a clever chipmunk represented Odie. Otto explained that they would have to go through the electrical room and towards the refrigerated room before reaching the loading dock, where they would find the key for the truck. They will then free Ethel before escaping with the milk truck and driving to freedom. Garfield wonders why they go through all that trouble when they could just go straight for the cheese room, which Otto explains is heavily guarded and insists on following the plan he had for them. That said, Otto worries that they need to be better equipped and decides to train them before the big breakout. He pushes them to the limit and uses mind tricks to get them prepared. He then turns to Odie, who claims he struggles to fix their lack of teamwork. Odie ties up the worn-down Garfield and Vic behind a tree to force them to talk about their issues. When Garfield keeps blaming Vic for abandoning him in an alley, Vic speaks up about what happened. That night, Vic finally enters the city carrying a much younger Garfield. The different scents in the city quickly drew them, but people chase them away because they were stray cats. He runs to an alley after a dog chases them off from a hot dog stand when he sees a kitchen staff throwing leftovers in a garbage can. He leaves Garfield on a box while he scavenges for food, but before he can find anything, the kitchen staff returns and drives him away. Vic planned on waiting for him to return inside, but the staff took his time talking to someone over the phone. By the time he finally finds food for Garfield, he has already crossed the street to where he meets John. Seeing him being cared for in a way he never could, Vic hides behind a mailbox so Garfield could have a better life than he could ever give. Vic explains that he never abandoned him, but seeing him so happy, he couldn't bring himself to take him away. Having reconciled with each other, Otto deems them ready and prepares for the break-in. Roland and Nolan report back to Jinx with Vic and the others ready to break into the farm. With that said, Jinx goes behind their backs and quickly calls in an anonymous tip about the break-in. They initially struggle to understand what she said as they don't speak cat, but thanks to the overly passionate Marge, they discover the break-in and prepare to catch them red-handed. On the day of the heist, Garfield, Vic, and Odie sneak inside in children's backpacks who visit the farm. Once inside, they quickly head towards the electrical access door and inside an air vent where they get separated. Garfield lands inside at the center of the room, alerting Marge of their presence. Odie and Vic save Garfield from being shredded, boiled, or chopped. They quickly go to the loading dock, but Odie claims the keys are missing so Marge suddenly walks in on them, who claims to be aware of their attempted heist. As Marge closes in on them, Otto urges Garfield to work on getting the keys while he creates a distraction. Garfield briefly gets the keys from Marge, but she gets back up and is intent on capturing them. Vic uses Garfield and Odie as a distraction, quickly running for the truck while leaving them behind. As expected, Vic abandons them while he runs for the exit alone. With Vic breaking through the gate, Otto runs to Ethel but is cut off by Marge, who brings reinforcements. He struggles to get past them and is later forced to flee from guards with shock sticks while Garfield and Odie are taken away by the city pound. At the pound, Garfield is disheartened after being convinced that Vic has changed, only to be abandoned again. The other cats at the pound claim to know Vic and have been part of the crew at one point. 
they reveal how Vic abandoned them to watch over his kid, watching him from a huge tree across his house. Suddenly, Odie and John show up to free Garfield, much to his relief. He was glad to return home, clearly having missed his great life. Even John went out of his way to make his favorite food, lasagna, to welcome him home. When he was about to eat his food, he was reminded of what the cats at the pound said about Vic staying in a huge tree across Garfield's home. He climbed up to discover that he was there, marking the days he was watching over him. Garfield quickly realizes that Vic abandoned them to save him from a life of crime after realizing that Jinx wouldn't let him off the hook. He expects Garfield and Odie to be taken to the pound and believes John will get them out after he sees them wearing tracking collars. With that said, Garfield claims they needed to save Vic before it's too late. Garfield and Odie return to the villain's hideout only to discover what Jinx had planned for Vic. Worried that they can't do it alone, Garfield begs Otto for help to rescue his father, whom Jinx intends to throw off the train into a ravine on the Mile High Bridge. Before the train arrives, Odie sets up a net to catch them while Otto helps Garfield catapult toward a moving train. He successfully frees his father and escapes to the top of the train, but the villains catch up to them. Thanks to a swift delivery, Garfield then jumps on the drones and uses food to attack the enemy, which only delays them long enough until they reach the bridge. He then plans on leaping over the net that Odie prepared beforehand. Unfortunately, the net is too tight, and instead of landing safely, they are propelled back to the train where Jinx and her henchmen await. Roland and Nolan were so moved by Garfield and Vic saving and loving each other that they decided not to follow Jinx's plan. Jinx gets furious and attacks them all. She also gets knocked off the train when she hits a beam. They grab hands together and use Roland's flabby skin as parachutes, but quickly fail. As they fall to certain doom, Otto rescues them and swings with a rope, also catching a falling Jinx. Later, Garfield sets a meeting with Marge to return the milk truck and the real mastermind behind the theft in exchange for Ethel's freedom. Marge claims that no one will be looking for Ethel as she has thoroughly burned her papers to ensure no trail returns to her. Ethel and Otto finally reunite and they share a kiss. Garfield, Odie, and Vic return home and awkwardly go their separate ways. John was glad to see Garfield and Odie back, who wondered if they wanted to be free reign pets. Suddenly, Odie convinces Garfield to invite Vic inside, but when he can't find him, Garfield looks for him on the giant tree across their home. He then welcomes Vic inside after hugging it out and reconnecting with his father. Garfield then cooks them dinner to welcome the newest member of the family, who quickly gets comfortable with them. Then, on Garfield's birthday, they invited Otto and Ethel, the cats at the pound, and even Roland and Nolan, and they lived happily ever after. Thank you for watching. Check out these other videos and make sure to subscribe and tap the bell to be notified about our latest videos. See you next time.